Today in the parish, we have cloudy skies with a high around 70 degrees, winds from the east at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Hello, I'm Pastor John Rudolph of the North Carroll Cooperative Parish, and I don't know what the weather is in your part of the world, but we are glad that you've joined us for this weekend as we approach May the 8th, happens to be Mother's Day uh, here, and uh, we're just thankful for this second week of the series, Come Hail or High Water. We are delighted to spend some time together. Last week, we talked about how everything in the weather begins with the sun. That is never more evident or true than in the mornings before our feet even hit the floor. Most of us become amateur meteorologists. I don't know how exactly your setup is or what time you get up, um, but it's already light out when I awaken for the day's adventure. And I can tell before I put my glasses on, or again, before I even get up out of the bed, uh, what type of morning it's going to be weather-wise. If it's bright and illuminated in my room, I know the sun is shining. And if it's dull and dark and low-key, and I'm not even exactly sure what time it is, even though my alarm just went off, I know that we are under cloud cover and the sunlight is obscured. And so, this week we are going to talk about suns, or <laughs> we're going to talk about clouds. Hopefully Catherine can edit that out. We're going to talk about cloud, um, and especially cloud cover today. We're going to talk about some severe weather. We're going to talk about some rain and snow next week, and then the week after we're going to talk about some severe weather. Um, and so we'll talk more in depth about clouds and what they hold. Uh, but for this week, just clouds in general and what clouds specifically do to vis visibility. I want to quote some work from Dave Stawick, uh, part of our preaching team, um, and again, our, our resident uh, meteorologist <laughs> on staff here, um, at least from practice and experience and his lifelong adventures with his parents that were uh, in the military um, serving um, the Air Force and preparing planes for takeoff all around the world by studying the weather patterns and his time in the Midwest and all those farms paying attention to weather. Um, he has uh, provided for us some frameworks some metaphors here to study the Bible this month with come hail or high water. And he talks about uh, meteorologists and pilots, I want to just read some of this work so I don't mess it up, how they're concerned about clouds in terms of obscuring visibility and causing precipitation, things that may obscure our vision. Obscuration, I believe the word is. We'll talk about precip next week, as I said. Uh, but this Sunday, we'll hone in on clouds as impediments to visibility. All pilots yearn for weather they call CAVU, C-A-V-U, Ceiling and Visibility Unlimited. Ceiling and Visibility Unlimited. That's key for this week. It doesn't always work out that way, and we all need to work through that, literally or figuratively. We can use the basics of last week, including the notion of condensation and dew point and the pr principle of atmosphere cooling by four degrees per thousand feet to estimate cloud height, something that is important to pilots. This is really cool. Whether you're in the math or science, I think this is really interesting. I'm in the numbers right now as I'm teaching statistics, and so I like this computation. For example, if the temperature at the surface is 71 degrees and the dew point is 51, I do know that dew point related to temperature um, is also very important to humidity. Uh, so if you're going to go camping or you're going to go spend some time outside working, you need to pay attention to the dew point. But in this case, uh, we're able to calculate the difference and that's 20 degrees, 71 minus 51. And then you divide that number by 20, by four, and then um, by, yeah, you divide 20, that number, by four degrees, and you get five. So that's a simple computation. 71 minus 51, since I fumbled it a little bit, is 20 divided by four, and you get five. Now you take that number, five, and you multiply it by the 1,000 number, 
and that tells us that clouds that form are probably going to be about at 5,000 feet above us. And so that's really cool, and it's really important to pilots. Um, and so that, that's a neat little computation that we can figure out where the cloud cover is going to be, uh, where visibility issues might occur, um, especially if we're flying an aircraft or riding in one, uh, which is important for us. Because, yeah, you know, we might not need to know how to do that calculation. It might seem trivia to us. But to pilots, that's important when they're flying, especially when they're landing. Um, so for us, you might say, well, who cares? Why are we going through all this? Um, don't really know. I'm not going to fly a plane today. Um, but for any of you that's ever traveled by air, you, we know that not all airplanes take off and land uh, on time. And a lot of times it's due to the weather and specifically cloud cover and obscuring the visibility, especially for taking off and landing, and, and how air traffic controllers have to handle that. I know Pastor Melissa and I, one time, we finally were getting a getaway for my birthday, by the way, 10 years ago. Uh, but I remember it like it was yesterday. We were going to Miami. I had never been. We were just going to go for the weekend. It was a short trip, so every hour counted. We went into BWI, and it, we could hardly see to drive. So we knew that we were into some issues here. And sure enough, all flights were canceled. I mean, nothing was coming in or out of BWI. Um, and so we were perplexed and didn't know what to do. We know we wanted to get away and we know we had a babysitter. We knew we weren't going back to Hampstead. Um, so we got on the internet and we discovered that in Washington, D.C., you know, just across uh, the way, uh, there was no cloud cover. And so we shot over to Washington, D.C., we took the parkway and we got on a plane, clear skies there, and made it to Miami uh, that afternoon. And so it does matter. And it certainly matters, too, if we're driving in the fog. Um, and so we are affected by cloud cover as well. Well, clouds also pop up, and this is the point. And this is why you're here. This is why you've tuned into NCCP Anywhere. Clouds pop up in the Bible from time to time, especially in critical points. Oftentimes, God is depicted as being uh, present in the clouds or speaking or guiding the people through the clouds. Uh, we even hear of a, a cloud of witnesses in the scriptures. And so clouds are, are used as imagery all throughout our scriptures. And so we just didn't make this up. We just didn't want to be cool this week and talk about clouds. Clouds play an important role in our scriptures, especially um, with manifestations of God and, and his presence uh, with the people of God um, or in this case, signifying something huge is about to happen. And our reading today does in fact come uh, from the gospel according to Mark chapter 13. Uh, scholars refer to this as Mark's little apocalypse. And it starts here, our reading today, from verse 24. It says, In those days after suffering of that time, the sun will become dark and the moon won't give its light. The stars will fall from the sky, and the planets and other heavenly bodies will be shaken. Then they will see the human one coming in the clouds with great power and splendor. Then he will send the angels and gather together his chosen people from the four corners of the earth, from the end of the earth to the end of heaven. Learn this parable from the fig tree. After its branch becomes tender and it sprouts new leaves, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, you know that he's near at the door. I assure you that this generation won't pass away until all these things happen. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will certainly never pass away. But nobody knows when that day or hour will come. Not the angels in heaven, not the Son, only the Father knows. Watch out. Stay alert. You don't know when the time is coming. It is as if someone took a trip, left the household behind, and put the servants in charge, giving each one a job to do and told the doorkeeper to stay alert. Therefore, stay alert. You don't know when the head of the household will come, whether in the evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows in the early morning or at daybreak. Don't let him show up when you weren't expecting and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, stay alert. Stay alert. 
this apocalyptic passage um, talking about the um, return of Jesus the Christ being a cosmic event. And when these writers like Mark in this case, or John of Patmos, or, or Daniel even in the Old Testament, and we had some other readings from that time period as well, when they talk about the ultimate victory in God, of God, God making all things right, and in this case through Jesus Christ returning um, to this earth for final victory, it's not just an event that affects you and I, it's for the whole cosmos, not just all creation, the whole cosmos. We see everything here is affected, the sun, the moon, the stars, everything. And then the point here for Jesus is that it's not, the point is not how or when this event will occur. The point is about being prepared. The point is about, we, we'll know when it happens. And in the meantime, what do we do about that? I know this weekend happens to fall on Mother's Day. And uh, I'm thinking about my mother particularly uh, this day and the mother of my children, uh, Pastor Melissa, who is just an amazing woman of God and does all kinds of tremendous uh, work here in the community and, and all at the same time keeps our family running. She's just an amazing person. So I'd like to send a shout out to Pastor Melissa as my uh mother in my household uh, and so i just give thanks and glory to god for her i also pause for a moment and know that this is a difficult weekend for many for a variety of reasons and so however mother's day brings sadness and grief and and opens wounds for you i i don't pass over that lightly and understand uh, exactly how this is not a joyful weekend for some it's also bittersweet for me because i miss my own mother she's still alive uh, but she's at a distance geographically and also with her memory loss. And so it's just not the same visiting or speaking with my mom. And I worry about her and, and her husband, Ron, as well. And, and so I give her over this Mother's Day to mom or to, to God as well. But one of the things that I remember and I chuckle a little bit about is in my childhood and, and basically where I grew up in the uh, I was born in 1972, so I grew up in the 70s and 80s, and my mother was coming out of the 60s, and we had all this world turmoil and, and fear of the Soviet Union and the Cold War and all the things that were going on, and she was a very faithful person, and, and she had particular ways of viewing Scripture, and, and the bottom line is she had my brothers and I like like almost terrified in a bad way uh, uh, that it was all coming to an end. Uh, and she would always speak about signs and wonders and, and, and things that were happening around the world that pointed towards that Christ was coming soon. And, and so she almost, it was almost as if she looked for you know, this escape, like, don't worry, you know, these problems can't be solved, but, but we're going to be taken away from this uh, very soon. And it was a faithful response, and it was the way that she dealt with the things that were going on and around her. But for a little boy, um, it was rather scary to tell you the truth. And so I chuckle on this Mother's Day weekend that this is the passage that we have. Because frankly, as a 10 or 11, 12 year old boy, she had me looking into the clouds on a daily basis. Oh, is that Christ returning today? Or is that him out there? And, and you can see these formations in the cloud. The truth is that almost every generation of all time, including this first century audience that Mark had, looked around at various things that were happening in their neighborhoods and around their world and looked at all the bad and the negative and, and said, how long, how, how long do we have to endure this? And especially to groups of people that were persecuted or in danger like Mark's audience here in the first century, uh, whose death was right around the corner specifically because of their faith. I mean, this became literature that, that spoke heart or hope to their hearts that were constantly in fear and in danger. And it says, no, this is not the final answer. You might be under the oppression of the emperor, but Jesus is going to come and make all things new. And all generations, ours included, we just, you know, are, are still in the midst, but have come out of the major part of the two-year pandemic of COVID. And, and now we look at issues uh, in our own country in terms of division, and we look at war in Russia and Ukraine, and it's almost as if I'm back in the 70s all over again in early 80s where we had all, these, all this strife and all these wars and rumors of wars. And so this passage can speak to us as well. How long, O oh Lord? And the way Jesus answers this is he basically says, don't look to the clouds. 
You know, I'll be coming in the clouds, but don't look up there. Live your life with faith, not fear. With hope, not um, fear. Faith and hope and love of God and love of neighbor. That's what you do in the midst, even when things appear to be falling apart around us. It's funny, this this passage, um, we say, then they will see him coming in the clouds with great power and splendor. That is a hopeful verse. Again, especially for us and for every generation. We will see him coming in the clouds with hope and splendor. It's funny, his first century audience here for Mark would have also known that the god, little g, Baal, was known as one by the pagans. He was known as one that rode on the clouds. And so this god, Baal, would ride on the clouds evidently. And so you can imagine them looking up in the clouds and waving the Baal or praying the Baal or, or looking for Baal in the clouds and and so maybe there's something going on in here where, where Jesus is and, and where Mark you know, relays, no, you know, it's not about riding on the clouds. Jesus is going to cut through these clouds. So you don't have to spend your time looking up there. You'll know it because Jesus will cut through the clouds of, uh, that are causing visibility issues altogether. And so that brings us to this idea of... of returning to this discussion about um, the pilots and their wishful thinking for a, a day that is going to be cavu, ceiling and visibility unlimited. That's what they hope for, but that's not the reality. We hope for all things to be clear and wonderful for us too. That's usually not our reality. Our vision is usually obstructed as well. Sometimes things that, that, you know, not of our own doing. Other times we are, are distracted and the visibility issues are our own fault. And so those are times when we're making gods out of, out of things. We're making little bales out of things in our life that cause us to have an obstructed view. And so we think about what are those things that cause us some disorientation you know, it's interesting when they're training new pilots, they won't even let them dry or fly um, you know, through clouds when they're young and, and being trained and, and newly uh, behind the cockpit. They don't want them flying through the clouds because they don't want them to get disoriented. I think that's what Jesus doesn't want for us as well. He doesn't want us so focused on the clouds, the how and the when he will return, because we too can get disoriented. There's a saying for the pilots, keep your head in the cockpit. Cockpit. Keep your eyes in the cockpit. I think that's a wonderful image, imagery for us. In other words, they're saying trust your instruments. Don't look out the window. Trust your instruments. Keep your eye in the cockpit so you don't get disoriented. Trust your instruments. It'll help you fly through these clouds. It'll help you get to the point where you can see the landing field and you can prepare to land your plane. But if you're looking up in the clouds, you can get disoriented very quickly. You can even think, pilots can even think they're in a free fall. Man, isn't that our case sometimes with faith? We get so lost in the clouds, either by our own doing or by the distractions around us. And we can just hear these words of Jesus. Stay alert. Be alert. Know this word. Pastor Jerry referred to the Bible as, you know, this is our cockpit. If we're to keep our eyes focused on anything or staying somewhere, staying inside the cockpit, well, for us as Christians, it's staying in this Bible, staying in this Word, so we don't get distracted, so we don't get disoriented, so our view is not obstructed by outside things. We have to know these words. We have to know these stories, know these passages. We have to know the Word of God like we talked about last thing. Everything in our faith starts with the Son of God, which is Jesus the Christ, which is the Word. And so it's great wisdom for us today. Stay in this book. Keep our eyes focused so that we can navigate this world. There's a saying in, in uh, airplane life, in the pilot's life of a pilot, and that is um, the least important mile that you've flown is the one that you just did. In other words, stay focused on what is ahead. 
I love the scripture, and we're going to get to this on Pentecost from Acts 1, when Jesus is having a final discussion with the disciples, and he actually ascends to heaven, and the two heavenly, mysterious men that are left behind talking to the disciples, he questions them, what are you doing looking up? Go, go out into Jerusalem, Judea, and, and to Samaria and beyond, and, and spread this gospel. And that's basically what Jesus is saying here too. Don't look up into the clouds. Don't get disoriented. Focus on living your life of faith now. The victory has already won. The victory was won at the cross and at the empty tomb. Jesus will come again. That's guaranteed. We believe that. We say that in our creed. We look forward to it in our communion liturgy and the heavenly banquet. All that will come. We don't have to worry about when. What we have to worry about now is, is flying the mile that is ahead of us. Taking that walk, that step with God that is ahead of us. And we do that faithfully by keeping our eyes focused in the cockpit, which is the word of God. And when we do that, we can honor these words and this commission to stay alert, to stay ready. And then regardless of how or when we meet our maker, we are prepared. We are ready. The field will be in sight. So may God add his blessing to this word this day in the name of Jesus the Christ, our word. And may God be with you until we meet again. Amen.